Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Unconstructed Bible Talk. We are glad to be back on this evening after a couple of weeks of a needed sabbatical. Welcome back, Pastor. Thank you. And Minister Knox. Good to hello, see you. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> and so, you know, refreshed and ready. We're going to dig right on in this evening because, Pastor, I just looked at the replay from Sunday. And boy, howdy. That was some fire. That was some fire. There's Minister Esther coming on. That yeah. was some good, as my grandma said, preaching on Sunday. And, um, you know, I loved the, uh, the theme, uh, do you believe? That's a powerful statement. We could just stop right there. Do you believe? Because when you say that, automatically, guys, you know, as a Christian, we go, of course, yeah. But you brought some dynamics to the whole concept of believing being a little deeper than just the words that we say. So I want you to kind of set the scenario up around the conversation we're about to have this evening in terms of, you know, where 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 your inspiration came from on Sunday that led into such a powerful conversation? Well, as I said originally, uh, the music and the singing really began to um, I, I had planned out or had written out uh, what I thought God had for me to say. He changed it a little bit, as usual, but the 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 music. The, the song and um, Angela and Nate just really helped to take it to another level. Uh, and as far as do you believe, I, I had read Romans chapter 10 and uh, was looking at what Paul was talking to the people about. And the fact was that they were relying on the law to save them. And Paul wanted them to know that salvation comes only through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had, and uh, Jesus had asked the question of Martha about whether or not she believed that he was the resurrection and, and the life. And then, uh, uh, he, and, and then I brought out a second point was that when he came from on top of the mountain of transfiguration and got back down in the valley shall we speak there was an argument about uh, a man who had brought his son to uh, the other disciples and asked them to remove a demon or an evil spirit from him and they couldn't do it mm -hmm. and the man jesus said he asked jesus well you know basically he asked jesus well can you remove him, the evil spirit and Jesus said to him, if you believe, all things are possible. So that led me to the fact that we often talk about believing. And uh, so what does believing entail is one of the things I wanted to get from those of us who say we believe. And then I wanted to reach out for those who, I wanted to reach out to those who may not believe mm -hmm. and kind of give some uh, background as to why we ought to believe. And uh, uh, as I was doing the research, uh, I found a gentleman that asked, that talked about believing. And when he talked about believing, he said there, uh, uh, you know, when we say we believe, there's more to it than just believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, I'm trying to find that quote. Uh, I don't want to misquote the gentleman since I used him. So give me just a minute here and I'll see if I can find it. Um, he wanted us to understand that when we say we believe, uh, there's more to believing than just saying it. You have to truly 
uh, trust and understand that God is who he said he is. Um, he said to believe Jesus, uh, here's a quote, to believe in Jesus doesn't just mean to believe that he existed or that he was a great person whose life and teachings have made a deep impact on the world. Nor does believing in Jesus even mean that we acknowledge he was more than mere man, but was the son of God who came from heaven to save us from our sins. All of these things are true. He says, but they are not enough to save us from our sins. And he went on to say, even the devil believes in all these things about Jesus, but that doesn't make the devil a Christian. Uh, so what he's saying is, it's, the Bible says to truly believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have to commit our lives to him. We have to trust him totally and completely for our salvation. So I want us, I want us to get to a point where we trust and believe that Jesus is the Son of God, yes, but he also came and made an ultimate sacrifice that we could have a relationship with God. Um, and quite often we put our faith and our trust in humankind. Uh, we look for them to save us or for them to give us proper direction. And what we need to do is look to Jesus. That is, as the Bible says, he is the author and finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. And that's who we need to put our faith in, in the one that can save us. That was some good stuff. I was I was sitting in and writing. I've, I've listened to it now twice, but it's it's amazing as you hear, you go back in, you still, you, my ears were, were picking up a few things. And I want to go back to where you said the, mu the music influenced you yeah. and how important for us that the portal of our ears and what we're hearing sets an atmosphere, sets a tone for what we can hear and receive from God who we believe in, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, as someone is, is, is listening, I want us to kind of hold on to that. Ms. Knox, I'm going to come back to you on this one because this is one of those I want to be able to connect to our young people about why we uh, we may have to protect those portals sometimes. It's not that we can't listen to other things, but what we listen to has an influence on how we think, how we believe, and then ultimately how we can act, mm -hmm. right? So we want to kind of segue back to that because Pastor led with the fact that even though he had prepared and he was ready, when he heard that music, that melodic voice that those words uh coming forth that it set a precedence for how he was able to receive you know and how it influenced right and that it 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 not necessarily altered you wouldn't say it altered what you said pastor no 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 but it it, it enlivened the spirit i guess i could put the holy spirit i'm not it, 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 it awakened the Holy Spirit within me, and I could feel that it awakened the Holy Spirit within the congregation. Yes, I felt it through watching it on Facebook Live because I wasn't there. So looking back in it, I felt the Holy Spirit coming straight through Facebook Live, uh, through Facebook as I looked at it. You could feel the energy you could feel the excitement about what was happening what was being said what was what was going on so that spirit was that energy was alive and as you were saying and going through you know as christians i'm i'm, I'm deviating just a little bit but because we're going to we're just gonna let the holy spirit go okay as christians we are to be light to lead people feel that they see that they see in us something that perhaps they want you think that that's the case it's something that they see that you have that they just want to grab a hold and have a little piece of what do you guys think anybody know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I agree, uh, but they 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 don't want to do the work, or they don't want to um, 
placed himself completely um, into uh, the, the, the word of God to get it. They just, they're happy with the crumbs that are laid around the table mm. from those that, that labor. Um, they're happy with that. So they don't want to, what is the word? Sacrifice. Mm. Sacrifice. I want to sacrifice in order to have what some some faith believers have, but they want to be close enough that when things are awry, things are disarray in their life, they can reach out. They want to be close enough to be able to reach out. And that's what that's just my um my way of for those that are still not quite in the door, but outside the door and they're reaching in. And they don't quite have to do the work that we are doing or or, or have the faith that we have, but if they're close enough, you know, they believe they, they believe in what the Bible says, like the lady had enough faith to touch the him mm -hmm. garment of, of Christ and be healed. Mm -hmm. But what they haven't looked at is the work she did, she tried everything humanly possible, but then her faith is what, and then Jesus said it, her faith is what made her whole. And so, mm -hmm. Teaching mm -hmm. people that you got to have, you got to believe. That's what I got out of the message. There's so many people in the church, outside of the church, they talk about Christ, talk about God, talk about faith, talk about the Bible, but <clears throat> really hadn't completely opened their hearts and minds to what the Bible says for us to do. So the word commitment, like committing your whole self 100 percent. i think you you mentioned that path not 99 not 99.9 but what was it a hundred percent that 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 means surrendering stop trying mm -hmm. to be in control mm -hmm. that's shattering mm -hmm. for some people don't you know um yeah. You mean I got to give all yeah, I mean, of me over? Even what they, even to the point of what they're doing and the way they're doing it hurts them. If they, they still would do it to stay in control, even in that bad situation. I got it. I got it. I got it. I agree. I agree. Too many people who don't want to let go and let God. Mm-hmm. Thinking mm -hmm. that they they know what's best for them, right? Well, you know, Minister Esther, in in saying that letting go, letting God, you know, um, but then I'm not doing anything. You know how some people, but I, then I'm not doing anything to correct the situation or to be proactive. You know, in this, I don't understand how you know. Um, you're asking me not to do nothing. What do you say? Well, that's when that's where where you're in communication with God, because God is talking to you all the time. But He's not asking you to sit down on your rusty dusty until somebody brings you a stone tablet filled with the you know information about what your next move is. <laughs> yes, yes, so true, so true. That's right. That's right. Um, communication. Yes. How are we communicating with God? Where does this faith come from? Well, <laughs> Paul brought that out too. Uh, and if you read it, you see, and I'm going to paraphrase it. Paul said, uh, first of all, he says, um, how can they hear? Well, first he says, how can they believe if they don't know who to believe in? And I'm paraphrasing this. I'm not reading it exactly the way it is, but he says, "How can how can a person believe if they don't know who to believe in? Then how can they believe in Jesus if they have not heard about Jesus? And how can they hear about Jesus if someone doesn't proclaim Jesus? How can someone proclaim Jesus if they have not been sent to proclaim Jesus? Again, I'm paraphrasing, but in essence, that's what Paul is saying." You know, 
And then he goes on to say, the word is near you. So yes, as ministers and preachers, we, we proclaim the word, but it's still up to each and every person to, um, to have that personal relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How can you do it? It requires you committing some time to study and read the word of God. Uh, and there is no excuse whatsoever now for anybody not being able to read the Bible. They say, well, I don't have a Bible at home. I don't have, I don't have a Bible. If you have a phone, and, I, and, there, and, there, and, there, and there, I'm just go ahead and be, be ghetto. There ain't too many of y'all that ain't got a phone. <laughs> Matter of fact, I was reading today uh, in Yahoo, and they were saying that they're even giving phones to immigrants that come over in order to keep up with them. So pretty much everybody has a phone. If you have a phone, there is an app application on you. You don't have to put it on there. The app application comes on the phone. All you have to do is go to it, and you can upload or download a Bible on your phone, yeah. on your laptop, on your iPad, on your, on your desktop. So there's no excuse. Uh, all this thing about I don't have a Bible, that doesn't get it anymore. God has made it possible for all of us to have a way to communicate with him. And, you, and the other thing about it is you don't even have to read it. Or you can hit a button and it'll read to you. So that's no excuse either. Mm -hmm. It's the audio, and the audio Bible will read it, read it to you. So mm -hmm. there really is no excuse anymore. God has made it available to everybody um, to be able to communicate with him through his word. And then you communicate with him through prayer. Mm -hmm. You communicate with them through other believers. So I, I'm just throwing out some things here where people come up with excuses. And, and my mother used to tell me, she said, uh, excuses are just like buttholes. Everybody have one. <laughs> and she said, quite often they extinct. So, hey, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Pastor, what about Ed? And anybody can jump in on this one. We're talking about faith. We're talking about reading the Bibles. We're talking about building a relationship with God. And then for some, they are um, being enticed by false teachings, you know, because there are people out using the word of God for some not so godly uh, prophets, gangs. A whole, they're using it for a whole lot of reasons, right? So, you know, what what do what do we say about false teachings being able to, you know, um, uh, not necessarily look for the easy way? I guess is the best way to say it because sometimes that just is more enticing. It just looks a little prettier. It's a little easier. It's a little gentler to get in there and deal with it that way. But what does the word say about false teaching? It tells you to um, study for yourself and so you show yourself approval, meaning that you, um, you're supposed to hear what is being said, but then you're supposed to go back and you're also supposed to study and produce what God, out of that word, what God has to do with you. So you go study and if he's not, God's giving you something and it wasn't what you heard, then you know that that's something wrong there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's when you need to shake the dust off your feet. Just like you said, people that don't want to receive it from you, who he is, shake it off your feet, move on. But you should move, but that's the time you should move on to find somewhere where it's biblically being taught and biblically, you can see what's being taught. Right, right, right. Got to be able to see it. Right, and right. and beware of the wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes, ma'am. Because the devil's got all the good reasons for you to do bad things, 
And then you've got to know the Bible for yourself. So when you're being led down the wrong path, you know not to go there because the word of God tells me not to go there. True. All right. That's true. And everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is not going to get an uh, invitation into heaven, meaning that there, there are some that are healing in the name of Jesus because it's Jesus who's doing the healing and not them. So those people may uh, look worthy, but the day comes when Lord said, I know you're not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in this day and time, let's just talk about being a Christian right now, you know, um, our world is, is, it's a sick world right now. And being a Christian isn't always such a cool thing. Although when, when the need comes in, in the world, everybody want to run back to the church and ask the church to help them. But when things aren't so crazy or you're not your back's not up against the wall then you know it might be a you might think about the church every now and then maybe maybe not but not necessarily our our doors are not we're not packed every sunday the laborers are few out here doing the work uh, of the business of church and and yet you know there are certain times when you know people are going to come needing the help of the church. So can you have, can, can you exercise belief in God and have it as a sometimes kind of thing, pastor? Or this that needs to be, I'm believing in Christ and I'm making the effort to put him at the forefront of my day and not just wait for the crisis to come and, oh, remember, pick him up then and say, okay, God, I need you to take care of me right now. Well, the Bible speaks clearly to that in in the book of Revelation. Uh, In the book of Revelation, uh, when when John is having his revelation, um, one of the things that was said when he's talking about the seven churches is that God prefers us to be hot, either be hot or cold. There's no in between. He says, if you're lukewarm, then he spits you out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to believe in Jesus, then we need to believe in Jesus and we need to keep Jesus at the forefront at all times. Um, You can't straddle the fence. You know, today I'm for him, tomorrow I'm doing my own thing, you know, back and forth, back and forth, because then that's not a relationship. Uh, The best way I can put that is if you talk about a human relationship, if you're in it today and you're out of it tomorrow, that relationship is not going to last Mm -hmm. because there's no commitment there. Mm -hmm. And, and, And the person that you're in and out of that relationship with knows that you are insecure first one maybe either insecure or that definitely you're not committed and so they're not going to be committed to you because you're in and out you're wishy-washy so in order for god to do what god has planned for us we've got to be and i and i I mentioned it in the gentleman's uh outline of what he quoted you have to be wholeheartedly committed. You have to give him all of you. Does that mean everything is going to go right? No. Does it mean you're not going to stray from time to time? No, because that's the human nature. Uh-huh. I think I mentioned Sunday that you know we put our trust in people, but all of us uh, have a sinful nature. So we are prone to sin. That's why Jesus, that's why Paul told the Jewish uh, leaders, you can't keep the law because you are full of sin. So in order to keep the law or in order to be saved by the law, you've got to obey it 100%. You can't miss one little period because that tears the whole law, law, uh, law apart. So he says, what you do is you believe in Jesus who gives you chances, God's grace and God's mercy. God knows that we can't live right and we can't live a sin-free life. So he sent Jesus 
so that we can go through his perfect righteousness and receive righteousness on behalf or on the on behalf of what he's done for us. And it's it's you can't earn it. I'll go ahead and say that. So if you're thinking, well, I can earn it, I can get out there and do this, that, and no, it's a gift. But you have to receive. It's just like I say all the time. You can get the most elaborate gift on Christmas or whatever, on your birthday or whatever day it is. But if you don't unwrap, unwrap it, it doesn't do you any good. That's right. That's right. Now you mentioned about, you know, the law. Like there's so many similarities right now happening in our world with the teachings of, you know, um, Paul and and dealing with, you know, the, the, the powers to be who felt that they were above certain people. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, you know, um, we see that playing out in our, our day to day now. Um, a lot of the struggle we're experiencing right now is all about power, mm -hmm. you know, maintaining holding on to at all costs power. How do, how, what, what will we say to those listening, how to stay encouraged in the midst of this very discouraging moment in time when you're looking around and, and, and people who should be helping, who've been voted in the office to help the people who, you know, have the ability to help, they're, they're just, they're like these men <laughs> back in the day that that's focused on the law, but not on the truth at hand, who Jesus is. But they'll they'll be quick to say they're a Christian now. What do we say? What are our words of encouragement? Well, if nobody else to speak, let me say this. <laughs> um, my encouragement is, um, I, the way I would encourage us is that we need to put our trust in the one. I used, I used an analogy Sunday, so I'm going to go back and use that same analogy tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, we put our trust in, uh, in our beliefs and our faith in human uh, and, and in the fact that we want them to do what's right for us. First of all, in Paul was talking to the people and he said to the Christian, I mean to the yeah, to the Jewish leaders and the priests, he said, you know, you know the law, but you're subverting the law. You're using the law to oppress people. And the same thing is happening today. Mm -hmm. So so what would I say? I would say stop trusting in human beings. Uh, I think it's Psalm 118 verse 9 says uh, it's better to uh, it's better to have God as your refuge than to trust in human or to put your trust in princes. So it's better for us to trust in God. Why? And again, let me get back to my Sunday analogy, which was the falcon. And I said Sunday, I love the falcon. Y'all know I love the falcon. Matter of fact, before I became a preacher, I used to put up my finger like the Baptist and ease out so I could get to the game. <laughs> but the whole thing about it is Sunday. I did not look at the game, and I had time because I didn't because we didn't I didn't have to leave home until eleven o'clock. But I refused to look at that game. Why? Because I did not want to be discouraged. And if I had believed that the Falcons were going to win. I would have been disappointed. But if I believe and understand and know that Jesus has already won, then I won't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. I'd rather know and put my trust in somebody that I know has my best will at heart than to put my faith in somebody that may or may not win. Jesus has already won the victory. So put your faith in the one who's already come and proven that he loves us beyond all else. And, and let me stop talking let somebody else talk. <laughs> Minister, not any more to add to that. 
Just a little bit. We add a little bit. Uh, even though it's frustrating, it's disappointing in this world that we live in, uh, situations that we find ourselves in, the difference in <clears throat> believing in something on this earthly kingdom, the difference is believing in Christ is that uh, regardless of whether we get it or we don't get it, whether we live in uh, a mansion or just live in a regular house, whatever, or live in an apartment or even live in a box, if we believe wholeheartedly that Christ is our Savior and we believe that with all our hearts, our minds, and our soul, the difference in believing in something on this earth is that when we pass away, we take, we take, we don't take it with us. It stays. And, uh, but what God is offering us is everlasting life with Him. So this flesh may end, but eternal life begins. But it doesn't begin for those that don't believe in our Savior and our Lord and our, uh, our, our, our brother and a brother that looks out for us. And that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Frequently, when I have had issues, I'll call a good girlfriend, an associate, someone to help talk me off the ledge or you know, give me some clarity about my situation. And, you know, my, I call one per person and I'm not feeling satisfied at the end of that conversation. Call the second person. No, they didn't give me the answer I need. Call the third person. It's like, no, this is not working either. So finally, I threes my limit. But finally, I said, okay, sit, let's sit down and have a talk with God. And God will either tell me to be still or he'll tell me something like, go read a devotional. And whatever I'm reading has it all spelled out right there. So again, it's that communication with God. Yeah, that's good. Because at the end of the day, guys, um, God is our infinite, God is infinite power, uh, infinite intelligence, um, love, grace, mercy, all, you know, all of the, all of these, uh, there's unlimited amounts available. Um, he knows it better than we know what it is that we need, Minister Esther. We, you know, he, he was probably just sitting back going, okay, daughter, when you finish over there, I know you're not going to get what you need. I'm right here. I've been here all along, but I'm going to just wait for you to come home. <laughs> all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But for whatever reasons in our limited thinking, we don't necessarily remember. I don't know that it's, we don't think. We don't automatically put him in first lane, first position, our first go-to with that problem or that situation all the time. It was a natural response, Minister Esther, to go to a girlfriend that you thought because they're tangible, they're right here. You can pick up the phone, you call them. So maybe that thinking that the human connection gives us satisfaction. Um, but in truth, God in his infinite wisdom, his infinite understanding, his infinite amount of knowledge, his infinite understanding of who he is, that's really who we need to go to first, isn't it, Pastor? It is. It is. But here's, here's, the, here's the issue with that, one of the issues with that. If we go to a friend, it's possible that friend's going to tell us what we want to hear. <laughs> True. If we go to God, God is going to tell us what we need to hear. And sure. sometimes, and quite often, what we need to hear is not what we want to hear. That's good. Oh, that is so true. <laughs> That's good. It explains why we would then look for comfort 
in our girlfriend or a friend. It's Trying to easy. take the easy route. Yes, I was saying it, it's the easy. It's the easy. It's a little softer. Yes. <laughs> but believing in Jesus isn't always taking the easy route. It, we 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 talked about committing a hundred percent, not ninety nine, not ninety nine point nine, but a hundred percent believing trusting um i like what you were 99 saying 99 and a half won't do 99 and a half will not do will not will not. will not and so therefore you know believing in jesus is believing in the truth as you were saying pastor and the truth isn't always what we <laughs> What? <laughs> and if I'm talking to my friend, I can kind of coerce my friend into giving me what I want to hear. Yes, sir. Uh, God doesn't bar. <laughs> no. 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 Um, yeah, because you want your girlfriend to say, you right, girl, the heck with them. <laughs> exactly. And if it was me, this is what I would do. Um, right. <laughs> You but should. God's going to make you do the right thing. <laughs> right. Right. No neck rolling. No. Mm -mm -mm. Just here's the truth. Now, now what you're going to do? That's the key. Got no choice. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, back to that title it says, Do You Believe? So I'm, I'm posing it to those that are listening to ask yourself truly based on some of these things that we've talked about, you know, tonight and on the sermon on Sunday. Do you believe? Um, are you willing to submit 100% to a relationship with God? Are you willing to... Um, Listen, study, read so that you can have an intimate relationship with God. Um, are you willing to accept his truth? <laughs> Even when you it's not what you want, but it's what you need. Are you willing to do that? And not necessarily looking for the easy way in situations. Um, yes, um, it's hard, Pastor. It's hard, yeah. Minister. Yes, it's it hard, is. Minister Esther, you know? Yeah, it's hard. But you know what, I wanna give, I wanna do something Minister Knox always does. I wanna give you three nuggets why you should believe. Three nuggets. And Three nights. I'm, I'm gonna read them out. Okay. Number one, when you believe, you find that you have already achieved. Well, first of all, let me put it this way: you believe to achieve. Now, the three nuggets why you should believe in order to achieve, because when you believe, you find that you have already achieved the love of God, not just love, but unconditional love. The love of God transcends understanding and is more valuable than any love that the world can offer you. God's love for us is beyond understanding. It bears uh, it bears the fact of John 3.16 where it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. So believing, if you want to experience true love, try Jesus. God's love is, again, unconditional, all-encompassing, and is sacrificial. God love, God's love brings about cleansing, freedom, wholeness, and transformation to those who receive it in faith. God's love is demonstrated in his various ways of showing us mercy and compassion. When we believe and achieve the love of God, we are able to experience the true meaning of love and are better able to love ourselves and others. Number two, when we believe we achieve our true worth and value, our God-given status and identity, 
In 1 Peter 2, 9, it reminds us that by believing we are, we become the chosen of God and we have a special relationship with him. By believing in Jesus, we achieve a new name, a new perspective on life, new hope, new joy. And in other words, we become new. We are no longer bound by or valued by what the world says or who the world thinks we are. We become children of God. We are to lose our selfish ways, our old habits, our old ways of thinking, our old way of walking, and our old way of talking. And we are to lose our old opinions. Number three, believing in Jesus enables us to achieve salvation or eternal life. Because of the love of God in Christ Jesus and his sacrifice, we are forgiven of our sins. We die to our sinful nature and are raised with Christ to new life. That was good. That was good. Minister Knox, you're muted. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, what comes to mind is, um, to me, because we talked about communication throughout this whole broadcast, and that's to me, as well as what Pastor Jeff said about believing, um, truly believing. Uh, then once you believe, you have to have communication. It reminds me, and this will take, this will show my age. 1967, there was a movie. We loved it. It was Cool Hand Luke. And in that uh, Newman uh, character, he uh, refused to be incarcerated. So every chance he got, he escaped. Uh, and uh, one of the things the warden had told him from the very beginning, there was no way of escaping where he was. And so each time he would bring, they would bring Kulu back and he would a smile on his face. The warden, lec the warren uh, was lecturing him and uh, telling him all the things he's done wrong, all the things that he's not, and then he would get punished. And he would do it with a smile on his face. Just as soon as he's out of his punishment and back in his cell, he'd figure out another way to escape. Why are you bringing that up? This is what <clears throat> the warden said to uh, Ku and Luke every time. We have a failure to communicate. <laughs> Sometimes our lacking is our failure to communicate with our Lord and Savior. We must communicate. We must stay in relationship with him. We must, um, regardless of our circumstances, what we find ourselves in and where we find ourselves and how we find ourselves, we can't give up on communicating to our Lord and our Savior. It's a must. Uh, and some of our issues today is because of the failure to communicate and stay in touch with our Lord and our Savior. So I say communicate through that all um, so that uh, he can guide you uh, to the door, to the right door and the right window where he's already provided for us. And uh, I always say, and I'm, I'm going to do what pastors do. I, I have a saying that says, don't allow God to be your co-pilot, but your pilot to lead, to guide, and to direct your life. That's good. That's good. That was good. Um, excellent um, mental visual of him repeatedly doing a same tactic, <laughs> expecting a different result. <laughs> um, excellent. Excellent. Uh, Minister uh, Esther, do you have any? Any words for those that are listening this evening before we get off? And she may not. Uh, just that we need to stop adding our own extra stuff to God's salvation. We try to make it hard, but it's so easy. It's got nothing to do with church membership or communion or 
good works that we keep trying to do or keeping the Ten Commandments, which some of us find impossible to do, or how you dress or wear your hair, or if you can quote the Bible. It's based solely on your personal faith in Jesus Christ. And once you become a Christian, then the process of discipleship and spiritual growth begins. Salvation is like a, a joyous event while sanctification and spiritual growth are lifelong processes. Amen. 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 That's why I really thoroughly enjoyed our unconstructed Bible talk tonight, talking about do you believe? And Pastor, thank you for expounding, um, you know, from Sunday, which was amazing. So I encourage everyone listening to go back and review Sunday's message, um, do you believe? And uh, as always, Pastor, we'd like to leave the uh, leave this evening with um, you letting them know how to get in touch. And uh, I don't want to, I want to say this before I turn it over to you. For those that are listening, we are going to be celebrating and honoring our pastor on the fifth, su fifth Sunday of this month. And I encourage everyone listening, come and join us for a wonderful time of just um, thankfulness for the fact that we have a leader who doesn't just talk the talk, he walks it um, and lives it out loud for us to be able to see the example here on earth. And we thank you for that, Pastor. Did you say fifth Sunday? Did I say fifth Sunday? I it's think fourth you did. it's fourth Sunday. Fourth Sunday, I apologize. Fourth Sunday. Well, for a couple of things. One is, I'll say to our listeners, don't. Um, I think I heard uh, heard it earlier in our conversation where quite often we try to get ourselves straight, and we can't do it. But don't let that stop you from coming to God because He's the one who will be able to get you straight. He's the one who will be able to uh, give you directions and to help you correct any uh, errors that you may have made. And uh, as Jesus told the man with the son, if you believe, nothing is impossible. So regardless of where you find yourself or what others have said about you, God loves you. And as we often say, there ain't nothing you can do about it. Because there's actually nothing you can do about God loving you. God is going to love you regardless. But it's up to you to receive that love. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, our uh, phone number is 681-533-0236. Uh, once you dial that number, if you will follow the prompts. Uh, if I do not are unable to or are unable to pick up, uh, uh, leave me a message, uh, your name and number, and I will get back in touch with you. We have Bible study, which will be resuming tomorrow night at 630. Uh, there's a link on uh, on our Facebook page that you can pick it up and you can join us. Uh, you don't have to be a Bible scholar to join us in Bible study. Matter of fact, none of us are so um, scholarly that you can't talk to us. We are all learning. Uh, and then the other way, of course, is by joining us at 9325 Rivertown Road. We would love to see you in person. I said this right before I went on vacation. Uh, if you only come one Sunday, that blesses us. So we invite you to come. We want to see your face. Uh, as, as it was when I was a uh, young man, uh, we would like to see your, your face in the place. So come on up and see us. I say it all the time. If you don't like it, then, you know, um, there are many other places that you can go and worship. But at least give us a try. Um, because I guarantee you one thing. I guarantee you, you will find some loving folk at Rivertown. I guarantee you you'll find some compassionate folk at Rivertown. I guarantee you you will find that you are valued at Rivertown, and we will know your name. You won't just be a number. So uh, come worship with us if you can't make it. Uh, 
in person, then join us on Facebook. And we worship at 12 noon. Amen. Well, thank you guys for joining us this evening. And we look forward to seeing you in person as well as next week for another Unconstructed Bible Talk. Good night. Blessings all. Good night, everyone. Uh, God loves you, and so do we. And I'll say it again. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. You're blessed. Amen. Blessed.